How many times have you tried to get out of a relationship, but somehow you find yourself trapped or just stuck there, not have the courage to get out of the relationship, knowing that it is a very toxic relationship? Or finding yourself asking questions, why am I in this relationship? How did I get into this relationship? Why I did not see the signs? And how do I get out of here? How do I get out of this relationship? If you've been asking these questions and have not come up with some really good answers, then hang on. My name is Fazia Shah. I'm a licensed clinical social worker talking about toxic, narcissistic relationship with the codependent. Let's get started. We find that the narcissistic personality disorder lacks empathy, have a sense of entitlement, very grandiose, want to be the center of attention. But underneath this armor is a very insecure person. And a codependent is someone who seeks validation through external means. And most likely they have suffered from trauma. The messages that they received frequently on a long-term basis was that you're not worthy enough, not good enough, or at least that was the interpretation by the person who was suffering or who was being exposed to abuse. That you're not good enough, you're not worthy enough, it's always your fault. And the person starts to feel like they're bad, they feel shame, and then comes the codependency. So the codependency is the need for validation from another source, but it's not coming from within. The narcissist, who is very grandiose, will draw in a person who has codependency issues. And they draw them in by idolizing give it a lot of attention, love bombing. And then they know the weakness of this codependent that's needing validation. And so what they do is they use a lot of idolization, a lot of manipulation and control. And part of that is because they want to give the impression to the person that they're in a relationship with. In this case, I'm talking about the codependent that you are so wonderful. Uh, I can't wait to see you. I can't wait to be with you. And idolizing them to putting them on a pedestal. And for a core dependent, this may be the first time that somebody has given them this much attention or showered them with gifts, flowers, or compliments. And so this validation that they are getting hooks them in with a relationship, hooks them into a relationship with a narcissist, realizes that. And so they use a lot of manipulation and a lot of control. They also tend to use emotional exploitation. That the codependent has plans to go spend with their family or with their friends. And the narcissist will say, well, you know, here I am doing all these things for you. Um, you know, I'm always here uh, whenever you need me or I'm calling you, I'm texting you, I'm spending all this time for you and you want to spend time with your family and your friends. And the codependent starts to feel very um, guilty and shame and gives up their plans with their friends and with their family. And pretty soon, the narcissist actually starts to isolate them from all these close relationships that, that they may have had. And when that happens, now 
the core dependent is totally dependent for validation and for support on the narcissist. And so the narcissist is going to use this opportunity to create even more issues for this codependent because now they're going to start to use idolization and also devaluing. And that is where the trauma bond happens because the codependent is going to be seeking the idolization uh, where they're being idolized and they will put up with all this devaluing in the hope that they're going to be uh, put back on a pedestal. And the narcissist has recognized this need that the codependent has. So that's how they keep them in control. The codependent feels very trapped in this relationship because they don't know how to get out of this entrapment because the codependent lacks self-worth, feelings of not being good enough, poor boundaries, irrational beliefs. Narcissists use gaslighting tactics to manipulate the codependent's perception of reality, causing confusion, self-doubt, feeling like it's always their fault. And that's one of the things that the narcissist does is blames others for anything and everything and absolutely takes no responsibility for anything that's happening in the relationship. For one, they don't cultivate relationships. It's not a reciprocal relationship. It's a relationship that's one-sided. So the codependent starts to lose their sense of self and they become very dependent on the narcissist for validation. So we find that the codependent who has poor boundaries and they also have very unrealistic or very irrational beliefs that if they did so much for the narcissist, that they will, they will be able to fix them. But that doesn't happen because the best of the best have tried to fix the narcissist and it has not happened. And partly it's because they really rationalize everything. They have, they, they're very egocentric. They're very, they're, uh, everything is about thinking. So there's this, so they don't feel anything, the lack of empathy. Uh, they pretend to have empathy, which fools the codependent. But in fact, they don't have any empathy at all. They don't feel for anyone else. They, they would show the empathy for a little bit in order to get their needs met. But, and they're only concerned about their own needs and their own wants. And the codependent, who's an empath, who's empathetic, will give and give and give and give. And they get very exhausted in the process because no matter how much they give, give it's not enough. And this hope that maybe if I keep doing this for this person I'm involved with, that I may be able to fix them. And you cannot fix a narcissist. I have not seen that in my 40 years of practice, um, a narcissist getting fixed because they actually will come to therapy wanting to know how to fix you, how to make you do what they want you to do, even though you're doing it already, but it's not enough. So that's how the core dependent becomes very dependent on this relationship that they're in. And I highly recommend getting back into your life that you used to have before you got into this toxic relationship because the narcissist will project onto you what their own, um, without acknowledging that these are things that I need to work on, they will put them on you. They will even tell you that you're a bipolar, that you are you suffer from PPD, or that you are a very bad person, or that you are inconsiderate, and that you are that you have a sense of entitlement or that you're a miserable person. And sometimes it gets so worse that they will 
They may get physical. They may assault you. They may take some water. If they see a water and they're having their narcissistic rage, they may take that water and throw it at you. Or they may throw a piece of furniture or, or, or something at you. One of the things I also recommend, other than getting back into your life that you had before you met this person, but while you are in the relationship with a narcissist and they actually start to devalue you, one thing you don't want to do is personalize that. You don't want to explain and you don't want to engage. You definitely don't want to defend yourself. What you want to do at that time is become very still. Breathe and keep your attention on your breathing because you want to stay very much in the present moment and not take any of this stuff that they are throwing at you because it's probably all about themselves but rather than acknowledging that it's their issues, they put it on you. So don't personalize it because it's not about you. I highly recommend getting out of a relationship if you are with a narcissist and start he the healing process. Find a therapist, find the support from your family and friends, and get back to all the hobbies and interests that you had and start to find some joy and happiness in your life because life happens in the present moment. It doesn't happen tomorrow and it didn't happen yesterday. It happens now. And so you've got to stay in the present moment and discover your self-worth and validate your own self it's not going to come from other people. It's going to come from within. If you liked my video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. And I look forward to seeing you again. And I am wishing you the best. <laughs>